In addition to the direct monetary benefit that a top standing prize position in those events would earn you, the rating points you gained were significantly beneficial to you, as you admitted to me in our call. When you confess that having a higher rating would mean pe more people tune in to wait, w w higher rating would mean people tune in more to my streams when I'm battling Hikaru, Danya, or Eric. <laughs> oh my God! This, wow, this just gets better and better. 72 freaking pages. Oh my gosh. Are we going to read this whole thing? Over the last few weeks, the world has been following the major story regarding Hans Niemann, Magnus Carlsen, and cheating in chess. This has become a matter of significant public interest both inside and outside the chess world, and we present in this report our exploration of the events, circumstances, and data that have informed chess.com's decisions concerning the current controversy, as well as the issue of cheating in chess more generally. At the outset, we want to make clear that while these events highlight a critical topic in chess, cheating, the vast majority of chess games do not involve any cheating. We estimate that fewer than 0.14% of players on chess.com ever cheat and that our events are by and large free from cheating. We firmly believe that cheating in chess is rare, preventable, and much less pervasive than it's currently being portrayed in the media. With that background, the following is a brief summary of our findings and takeaways. Number one, we present evidence in this report that Hans likely cheated online much more than his public statement suggests. However, while ha Hans has had a record setting and remarkable rise in rating and strength, in our view, there's a lack of concrete statistical evidence that he cheated in his game with Magnus or in any other over the board in person games. We are presenting our findings here uh, and we'll cooperate with Feed on any further investigation. Now, this is interesting. Because now I'm confused. Now they say, wait, now I'm really confused. They say, they say, wait, so they say there is no, there's no concrete statistical evidence. But then in the Wall Street Journal, Wall Street Journal, they, it said that, okay, now I'm really confused. Okay, now I'm going to have to read like 72 pages. Um, okay, we were number, point number two. We were never pressured by Magus or his team whatsoever to remove Hans from chess.com or revoke his invitation to the chess.com global championship nor did we communicate with magnus regarding our decisions on these issues before we made them in fact magnus did not even know we were going to remove hans until hans went public with our private correspondence okay number three we uninvited hans from our upcoming major online events and revoked his access to our site based on our experience with him in the past growing suspicions amongst tops players and our team about his rapid rise of play, the strange circumstances and explanation of his win over Magus, as well as Magus's unprecedented withdrawal. In order to have more time to investigate the OTB situation and our own internal concerns, we uninvited Hans from our event and prevented his access to chess.com. We are open to continuing a dialogue with Hans to discuss his status on chess.com. And number four, we believe the chess organizers, federations, companies, and players can all work together more effectively to create great and assuredly fair chess events. Now, this is crazy because now I'm really confused. So Wall Street Journal saw the 72 page report. No. So now I'm confused. Like they saw it and they said unprecedented statistical statistics. But now now chess.com is saying on page one that there's no actual concrete evidence. So I'm really, really confused by the discrepancy between the two things. Okay, timeline of events, September 4th, 2022. This is probably actually important. Magnus Carlsen white pieces and Hans Niemann black pieces play a game at the Singfield Cup in St. Louis in which Hans wins. Hans, Hans gives a post-game interview and now we have footnotes. My God, am I back? Am I back in college or something? They're footnotes. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I got second. I didn't win. Okay, whatever. Who cares? Um, <laughs> Jeez, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Footnotes. Footnotes. Okay. Um... September 5th, 2022, Magnus tweets his withdrawal from the event, linking to a video clip in which the soccer manager can be heard saying, I prefer really not to speak. If I speak, I'm in big trouble. Chess.com emails Hans privately to let him know that his account has been discreetly closed and his invitation to the CGC has had, had been withdrawn. A copy of this email is attached as Exhibit A. It has historically been Chess.com's general policy to handle account suspension, closures, and invitations for titled players, such as Hans, in a non-public manner. September 6th, Hans publicly addresses his ban by chess.com, stating that although he cheated a few years ago when he was 12 and 16 years old, he has never cheated in a quote unquote in a term with prize money when I was streaming or in a real game, which as we know, this is not true based on uh, what was reported by the Wall Street Journal earlier. 
Okay. September 8th, 2022, Chess.com sends Hans a letter personally laying out the reasons for his decision to revoke his status on Chess.com and to disinvite him to the CGC, a copy of which is attached as Exhibit B. Chess.com responds to Hans's public comments via a tweet. See below in image one. Okay, um, this is, of course, the tweet which we've seen. Exhibit one, two, three. My gosh. Okay. September 27th, Magus releases a statement, public statement explaining his unprecedented professional decision to withdraw from the Sinkfield Cup. He admitted, he, he, or sorry, he indicates that he believes that Neiman has cheated more and more recently than he had publicly admitted. Okay, this is Exhibit B, right? Okay, dear Hans, I'm sending this letter with three important goals. Um, with th three important goals here we have. Um, to clarify factual inaccuracies in the statements you recently uh, you recently made regarding your fair play violations on chess.com. To justify my reasons for withdrawing our invitation to chess.com prize events, including the upcoming um, chess.com global championship, and number three, to talk about a path back to chess.com events. Um, first, regarding the comments you made concerning when and why you cheated on chess.com, in your interview, you mentioned, paraphrase, that you cheated when you were 12 and then later when you were 16 in an unrated game. This directly contradicts our statistical evidence, as well as the conversation you and I had in our private call when you confessed to cheating and there is written evidence from you that substantially corroborates this. You also contradicted your own statement that you had only cheated in unrated games in the interview by later stating that you did it to gain rating points, which obviously indicates cheating in rated games. As you indicated in your interview, Chess.com has the best fair play detection in the world. Using that system, we have identified many clear instances of cheating. While there are other potential events, games and evidence that reinforce the untruth of your public claims specifically for the purposes of this letter we are informing you that some of our strongest data suggests you violated fair play on the following dates and then they give of course title tuesday qualifier on july 7 2015. a particular note in this event is that you played against someone and lost to someone we eventually closed for cheating in the in that very same event and that your game reflected clear engine versus engine play oh my god jeez wow okay well uh, engine versus engine. Oh, man. Holy mackerel. Title Tuesday qualifier, April 4th, 2017. Pro Chess League 2020 season, numerous games and performances. Speed Chess Grand Prix, June 2nd, 2020. Speed Chess Grand Prix, June 16th, 2020. In addition to the direct monetary benefit that a top standing prize position in those events would earn you, the rating points you gained were significantly beneficial to you, as you admitted to me in our call, when you confessed that having a higher rating would mean pe more people tune in to... Wait, w w higher rating would mean people tune in more to my streams when I'm battling Hikaru, Danya, or Eric. <laughs> oh my god. This, wow, this just gets better and better. Um, I need... I need people to believe that I'm a worthy rival to follow and subscribe. <laughs> Jeez. Wow. This is insane. Okay, on, of that, on that note, there were several matches during the year 2020 in which you farmed your fellow chess peers for higher rating. Specifically, the following matches feature blatant cheating throughout. Match versus Krikor Mekatarian on June 18th, 2020. Match versus Jan Pomniachi playing under an anonymous account June 20th, 2020. Match versus Daniel Naroditsky on July 28th, 2020. Match versus David Provian, July 25th, 2020, and a match versus Benjamin Bach on August 9th and August 11th, 2020. What? He did it twice against Benji. He did it twice. Twice against Benji. Twice. Wow. Okay. We are prepared to prevent strong statistical evidence that confirm each of those each of those cases above, as well as clear toggling versus non-toggling evidence where you perform much better while toggling to a different screen during your moves. Okay, again, they're not getting into a lot, a lot of stuff here specifically, but wow. Okay. Um, okay, so they they okay, so let, let's keep going. Moving on to my second point, I want to address both the reasons and timing for freezing your account or sending your CGC invite. When I received your confession back on August 12th, 2020, in light of your age, I allowed you to create a new account with no fair play markings to continue to stream chess. You'll remember that I worked hard. I assume by I they mean Danny. Um, but you'll remember that I worked hard to both advise you on this process and to protect you as much as I could. I would do that again for you or any young player I deemed to have lost their way and wanted to choose a better path forward. Okay. 
For my team, however, there always remain serious concerns about how rampant your cheating was in prize events. As you know, we've closed the account of hundreds of title players, including four of the top 100 Grand Masters, who have confessed to cheating, and we carefully monitor and help all of them as they rehabilitate into participating in our events. You and I had many subsequent discussions in our Slack DMs where we openly cooperated on the right way for you to rebuild your reputation. In finalizing the field for the upcoming CGC, and based on a growing concern regarding ensuring fair play in Chess.com's first million dollar prize event, my team did a deep review of your past history and encouraged me to rethink my position of letting you continue to play in our prize events on Chess.com. I ultimately made the decision that too much was at stake given our ongoing suspicions and past violations. Considering the above, we made this decision to close your account privately and uninvite you from the CGC. I regret the timing, but the timing between the Sinkfield Cup and the CGC required me to move quickly to replace your spot. I believe I acted in the best interest of the game and all participants to reconsider our invitation with so much at stake. I'm going to bring my letter to a close with an offer to have a call. If you're willing to correct the false statements you made about having never cheated when it mattered, now that you have said these untruths publicly, acknowledge the full breadth of the above violations and cooperate with us to compete under strict fair play measures, chess.com would be happy to consider bringing you back to our events. That's kind of crazy, actually, that they're willing. That's crazy that they're willing to actually let him potentially come back. That isn't that, in my opinion, is insane. Absolutely insane. Um, in fact, I think it would be a wonderful redemption story for the full truth to come out, for the chess world to see this and acknowledge your talent regardless of your past and give the community what they deserve. The truth. I look forward to talking more. Sincerely, Danny at chess.com. Title Tuesday Blitz, July 7, 2020. 15 is a 12 year old Hans is Elo 2197 3 plus 2 74.0499 games likely cheated it okay uh qualifier title Tuesday pro chess league games against narrow disky now this apparently is a mistake I guess this is July not April 11th um but okay we have all this stuff let's get down here overall we have found that Hans has likely cheated more than 100 online chess games including several prize money events he was already 17 when he likely cheated in some of these matches and games. He was also streaming in 25 of these games. While his performance in some of these matches may seem to be within the realm of some statistical possibility, the probability of any single player performing this well across this many games is incredibly low. In addition to this, the manual review conducted by a team of trained analysts was in our eyes conclusive enough to strongly suggest Hans with cheating. Notably, Ken Regan, an independent expert in the field of cheat detection and chess, has expressed his belief that Hans cheated during the 2015 and 2017 title Tuesday, as well as numerous matches against other professional players in 2020. See image two below, in which Ken shared his views with us. Okay. Okay. Their wording states our lawyers don't allow us to state that he's cheated. Okay. I mean, I, I don't know. Like, obviously, people see. I Who knows? Everyone's going to be looking at this very closely. It says... um. Dear Eric and Sean, I'll have to see which particular interviews, but in the past 24 hours, I've referenced Tyler Cohen and specifically the link given given there to your statement circa September 8th and 9th that Hans has not been told the full extent or nature of his cheating. I have also emphasized the, emphasized the importance of Neiman having cheated on multiple occasions. Um, is it true that I, that I, Roger, is it true that I, Roger, Oh, that must be some mistake. Is it true that he has not cheated in a time period that I've quantified as since August 20 or two years, either OTB or online? I certainly agree he cheated in 2015 and 2017 and in the five sets of games against Nepo, Mkhitaryan, Bach, Narodinsky, and Paravian. Okay. Um, indeed, our recent investigation has made was made in view of prior games in which we use the same tools to identify the Hans had cheating games on our site. Notably, we initially closed Hans' account in 2020 due to suspected fair play violations. In 2020, during a private call with Danny Wrench, CCO at chess.com, Hans was informed of his account closure for suspected cheating in these events and matches. During the call, during this call, Hans confessed to the cheating offenses. Following the call, Hans and Danny communicated over Slack, an internal real-time messaging system, where Hans asked how to acknowledge a cheating offense and how to affirm that it would not happen ever again. In that call, Danny agreed to support Hans' desire to save face and announced publicly that he, he was voluntarily closing his account to start fresh. Hans confirmed with Danny that he had made the announcement to close his own account. Hans was also asked to email his admission to our team, but he did not. Given that Danny was trying to be helpful and see the best in Hans, as a young rising player, the lack of email was ignored. The image three and image four below for clips of this conversation. Hey, just saw this sometime from now till 1.30 Central works or after my stream, which will probably end around 7 p.m. Central. Okay, we'll try to catch you soon. Talk in 15. I'll give you a Zoom link. Sure, Zoom link. 
cut out. I made the Hans on Twitch account, the famous account. Okay, um, great. You've been given the diamond title and updated updating ratings to 2,500. Go ahead and add to your previous account profile, but you've made a new account and voluntarily closed, and you voluntarily closed it. Let me know when done. You'll also need to link up your new username Hans on Twitch with your Twitch account, meaning, okay. Finally, I've up, updated your affiliate. You'll have a new affiliate link to your Twitch streams. Make sure you update that. Okay, Hans says, I updated the profiles. Hans Neiman, Hans Bull Neiman. Made the announcement on my stream and I got positive feedback. Oh, wow. I believe that this, this is positive. It can help me grow my stream and my brand. So, so Danny basically, as I read this, Danny was like too nice. That's actually the way I read this. He was just too nice. He was too nice to, he was way too nice. Um... It was way too nice. So basically he helped Hans close an account that he cheated on and come up with a story to cover that. That is, that is insane. That is completely insane. It's amazing how well these cheaters are treated. That's insane. That is absolutely insane. Like, what is Danny? Th I mean, okay, obviously now that'll never happen again, but man, 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 unbelievable. He, he tried to help Hans like 20 times. Danny Wrench says, um, really glad to hear that, man. Hey, Danny, where do I need to send the written statement? Okay, acknowledge the offense and promise to never do it again. Okay. All right. On later dates, Hans continued to acknowledge his prior cheating on chess.com. Of note, as shown in image five below, Hans discussed with Danny over Slack the possibility of lifting his ban and allowing him to compete in prize events. In these discussions, Hans continued to acknowledge his restriction from competitive chess due to his prior instances of cheating and reiterated that he understands his restriction from competing and further understood chess.com's decision to deny him opportunities again in the future. Okay. Um, this is a kind of attitude towards wrongdoing that has led to LA being a dump. Okay. That's a, I, I, this is not a political stream, but Hey, whatever, whatever floats your boat. Um, all right. That's, I, I mean, I, I, this, is, this is not political. You guys like that's very out there, but I mean, I, I am like, I'm a little bit confused. Like I, I'm not quite sure why this, why you're starting to make this about LA now. Like that, that doesn't really make sense. Um, but Hey, okay. Um, <laughs> Hans even says, hey, I <laughs> hey, I just wanted to check in and see if you talked to your team. And I also remember you initially saying six months in our first call, but I could be misremembering. Anyways, I don't intend to fight any sort of consequences and completely understand whatever you decide is appropriate. Hey, sorry for the second message, but I just want to ask about the upcoming U.S. chess qualifiers. And if you could make an exception and let me play. I'm only asking because it's a really good opportunity. And given the time control of the qualifiers, this is the best chance I'll have at the U.S. at a U.S. champ spot for a while. I completely understand your caution due to my past mistakes, but would really appreciate any consideration. Uh, Danny says, hey man, sorry for the delay. Had to discuss all this internally with a few other managers I rely on in this area. Unfortunately, we are going to uphold your banner prize events through the end of the year. While I know chess.com has never publicly banned you for cheating, there's going to be a question of why isn't Hans playing, and I'm sure you'll have to deal with that. At the same time, we also both know there are a ton of rumors circling about your account and standing, and many who think they know what happened even without confirmation. This means you'll, you're, you playing will also lead to tons of questions and scrutiny of why is Hans playing this event when he hasn't been playing Title Tuesday or other events for most of the year. So like the JSCC, I just can't risk such a high profile event right now. If you did well, people would be accusing you, not fair to you. I want to give you more time, give, give it more time if you haven't come back, competed in regular events for a bit and then you can throw your hat in the ring of bigger prizes again we're open to you rejoining the title tuesday and other prize events coming back like arena king starting in january you'll be subject to proctoring second field division camera during those events but pretty much everyone uh everyone is or lots are anyway at this point best wishes man and sorry i can't give you the answer you want this time around okay on says this is more than completely fair and i really appreciate you trusting me and giving me this chance i also agree and i don't think i should play i was playing a match yesterday versus shambuliak and was beating him and one troll came in and accused me in my entire chat accused me and my entire chat started speculating at this point i'm honestly not going to stream competitive chess too much because i'm honestly afraid to overperform as an i am since it just really hurts to have my play question again thanks a lot not even my closest friends have given me the benefit of the doubt and you've gone out of your way to help Hans says, hey, Danny, wanted to check in again. I appreciate the opportunity to return to tournaments, but I'm still working very hard on classical chess and don't intend on streaming too much. I prefer to stay out of the spotlight and focus on classical chess. I appreciate all of your help and hopefully I can return at the right time. So, yeah, I mean, again, very, 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 very hard. I mean, as I read the situation, just, you know, reading the reading between the lines, it sounds like the situation got to where it got in the first place because Danny basically tried to be too nice. He tried to basically give this kid 
chance after chance after chance, which is how we got here. Um, and it's yeah, it's quite uh, it's quite quite crazy. It's all it's all quite crazy, honestly. Looking at this now, again, they say he basically. I also read as far as online, it's hundred percent clear that he is that he has cheated here. Um, I mean, there there is a whole section on cheat detection. I again, I don't want to read it. I've already read like probably fifteen pages of this report. Um, so I don't really want to get into this, but, um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, there are people saying that chess.com is saying that he's cheated, but they can't say it because of legal reasons. People saying he hasn't cheated. I don't even know. Everybody's, everyone's going to have a field day going through 72 page, the 72 page report. And, um, I, I don't know. I don't know what to take away from this. I really don't know at this, at the present moment, um, it leaves a really, really bad taste in my mouth that that he was given many, many chances by Danny. I don't think he should have been given all these chances after um, after you know cheating in a couple of tournaments uh, as well. I think it's very, very. I feel like in many ways it's quite unfair that potentially he will be allowed to play in online tournaments again after the extent of cheating, after the amount of money potentially that he took away from very strong players in these various events. I mean, I find that very hard to believe, honestly. Um, but you know we'll see we'll see we'll see what the fallout is we'll see what happens uh obviously u.s championship starts tomorrow i think that uh there's probably gonna be a lot a lot of security 30 minute delay a lot of stuff going on and we're, we're gonna see we're gonna see we're gonna see what happens um and and nobody nobody really knows i don't think danny has to step down i i don't think he does i think um i actually think it's it's very critical here that when we read through this like the way that they do say it, there is no hard evidence over the board what i will add on that note however is that um when you look at these things like yeah they get they give random stuff you can speculate whether they're saying that he did cheat or that he didn't cheat because they get these graphs which say he's the greatest player since bobby fisher um but this question remains for feed a long term if there is circumstantial evidence, let, let's say like there, there is much more than what we have in this case, for example, but it's still not 99.98% where you have like the smoking gun. I feel like things are going to, people are going to have to figure out, um, figure out, they're going to have to tinker with various things because 99.98%, nobody is going to get caught if, if that is the threshold for, um, for, for catching cheating over the board. So it's going to be, it's going to be a, a wild, wild, probably next 24, 48 hours, um, and we will, we'll see, we'll see what happens. But I am going to be calling it a day, you guys, it's been a while.